Proper main bearing clearance is essential for engine longevity, especially when working on a high performance engine build. The right bearing clearance will allow for proper oiling with a minimal amount of friction so that we can achieve the horsepower we desire. In this installment of Summit Race Engine Building 101, we'll show you how to check the housing bore and calculate main bearing clearances. We'll talk about the advantages of looser versus tighter, and for our engine we went with a little larger to guard against crank flux, but it's a balance. Going too loose causes a lack of oil pressure. So, we used a dial bore gauge and micrometer, two essential tools for the process, to dial in just the right clearances. Follow along. All right, so basically the, the, the process is like, okay, what is that housing bore supposed to measure? Uh, there's a couple different ways. You know, Summit has a wide variety of engine building books like uh, by Joseph Potok or Mike Mavrigan, many others. Uh, another option, if you'd like, is you can go on using your handy phone, go into the summitracing.com help center. Uh, I just simply type in LQ9 specs into my search bar. I hit the magnifying glass. I scroll down just a little bit and I see something called Chevy LQ9 engine specs. I hit that button and you'll see Summit Racing for every one of the 46 different RPO codes uh, between Gen 3 and Gen 4 engines. Uh, Summit has written not only a spec guide but an upgrade guide. In the engine specs guide you can see the basic horsepower rating compression ratio a little bit below that. You see what the vehicle was offered you know, what vehicle and when by what year and the VIN code number that was unique to every one of those R RPO codes. Next, we've got one called engine block specifications. Uh, and if I go down through that, I can get my cam housing bore diameters that we mentioned a little bit earlier uh, in the series. And then we've also got uh, the housing bore dimensions, which are in this case, 2.751. So we're gonna go ahead and set up our dial bore gauge uh, to 2.751 and Mike's going to show you the proper torque sequence uh, for going through the main caps and then we will go ahead and document what the housing board diameters are. All right, so where we're at right now is we've got our, our uh, main caps all torqued down properly, torque angled down properly. Now we want to check out our housing board. Let's see what kind of a job the factory did, you know, or do we need to send it and get it line honed? Well, we've, we've already verified the block was good before this segment, but uh, what you would end up doing with it is you need a dial bore gauge. Um, a dial bore gauge, uh, a typical one, is only accurate down to about a thousandths, and that's not really close enough because you know just a very small change can really affect uh, your bearing clearance. You know, in terms of you know your your uh, uh, main bearing to crank journal. So uh, having one that's good down to a tenth of a thousandths is a really big plus. I've got a digital one. Uh, it's kind of cool because you, know, you see that you know that tenth number out there very clearly. Uh, but a lot of people actually prefer the the actual mechanical analog versions of it uh, because it allows you to see the sweep. Anytime you're you know probing a bore, you know you're basically going up and down and maybe even a little side to side looking for you know the low point uh, to find out what that minimum number is. Uh, to set a dial bore gauge is not the easiest thing to do because not all of us have a $5,000 sun and dial bore gauge setting fixture. What most of us do have is a decent set of micrometers. Uh, in this case, I have a zero to three inch mic, uh, or one to three inch mic if you want to think about it. And we've set it at that 2.751 number. Uh, we've gone in and basically, you know, zeroed off of that and we've gone and we found the low spot and we zeroed out the gauge going back and forth. It's a little bit of a lengthy process to get it done. If you, it, it does help to have a couple of people to do it if you don't have a, uh, you know, the setting fixture, but it'll make do. You go through all the mains from one to five. Uh, I actually like going by the front and the back of every single one because sometimes you see a little bit of a difference. Uh, when the factory or your machine shop is line honing a block, the, sun, the, the stones uh, in the line hone can be worn a little bit. And that's because some of them are basically constantly you know, running through a cap and those are wearing out quicker than the ends which are passing out the back or the front. So there's usually dips and low spots uh, you know, on, on, the, uh, on the mandrel and that can show up when you're actually you know, line honing a block. So in this case, uh, we measured the front and back of the mains. We had 2.750 with two. That's eight tenths small. 
you know, compared to the factory spec. What's that gonna do? We're gonna put a, a main bearing in there and that's gonna tighten that spec up from, you know, it says it wants to give you a thou and five tenths. The result is it's gonna give you something closer to uh, uh, seven tenths, you know, so in that case you'd run an X bearing, an extra clearance bearing. So we went through from front to back and 2750 with a two and 2750 with a five and a four and these in the back uh, are actually very close, 2750 with a seven and 2750 with a nine, meaning that that number five is actually the closest to actually being a, you know, the factory spec. Uh, a lot of times it can be that, you know, that one is the one that's actually closest, uh, you know, to the actual drive motor when they're doing the line hone and, it, you know, that's, you know, can affect it. So what we do know is when we go to put our bearings in this uh, engine here, that we're probably going to see them tighten up, you know, from back to front. And because we bothered to measure this the one time, we're going to know what to expect. And we've got some choices of running a standard bearing or running a X bearing or even combining the two and running a half under, you know, which we may end up doing through two, three, and four to get the clearance we want. Maybe running a full X bearing on number one and maybe running a standard on number five. Okay, we're ready to reinstall our caps and uh, start uh, checking our main bore clearances with a bearing so we can uh, actually calculate our, or measure our physical uh, oil clearances on our bearings. Right, so we've reset our dial bore gauge to the, uh, basically the spec off the crankshaft itself. Uh, we've written those specs. Uh, we, we went to summit.com, again, customer help. We went down through uh, the filters in that article to see that spec being 2.5590, uh, ours actually, our, our Pro LS crank, uh, number one was 2.5591 on number two, also there, 5590, it was dead nuts uh, on number three. And in the back, uh, we're a couple tenths shy of that, 2.55898. And again, we're getting way out there uh, in terms of numbers, uh, in terms of accuracy, but that's what you get when you, you know, get a dial bore gauge that's accurate down to the tenth. Uh, again, we set the mic off the, uh, off the main, and then we basically set the dial bore gauge off the mic. And so we're gonna get the net clearance uh, between the, the crank and the, the main bearings itself. So you're measuring two point Five five nine eight. So with this engine, uh, the H bearings were a little bit too tight. The Clevite HXs were a little bit too loose. Better to be a little too loose than a little too tight. But what good engine builders do is they'll mix and match uh, as necessary across the entire engine to just arrive at that perfect number. For us, that range we're looking for is anywhere from two thousandths and seven tenths to three thousandths and two tenths. For the power that this engine is producing, that's what we're looking for. So, what we ended up doing with number five, number four, number two, and number one was running the H's and the HX's. So basically one bearing shell of each. And in the center, we ended up leaving that because it's a thrust bearing. It's never bad to have a little bit of extra clearance there. Uh, we ended up running the HX bearings on both halves. So it's a mix and match, but you know, the when you go through the entire lineup now, uh, it's spun great. Uh, I'll give you an example of that. So I'll take this off, which we're using to measure thrust. So we've got a nice spin to it. It's just with some normal oil. There's no tight spots, it just feels good. Uh, one thing to look for when you're spinning a crank is, does it stop at one place repeatedly or is it always kind of random where it stops? And this one is good, we're in good shape with that. Be sure to like and subscribe to get more of our how-to, technical, and installation videos. Thank you for watching.